hi guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Fadekemi if you're new here welcome if you're old here what's popping my dreams in today's video we're talking about getting results in the place of prayer if you're one of those people who feel like you are not really you've not really been seeing results in the place of prayer you have prayed you haven't seen any answer this video might just be for you so if you're interested make sure to keep watching okay so let's dive right straight into it no time no time no time to waste so first of all what is prayer prayer is communication with the father it's important that your mindset about prayer is um very very healthy right your mindset about prayer should be communication not request show communication not q a <laughs> it can be q a in an aspect but many of the time try not to make your prayer time a time of just complaining making it about oh god give me this god give me that if you came to meet me to talk to me about something for example i expect that you would allow me respond right and it's okay to ask questions so even though i said it's not a request show or a q a that doesn't mean that you shouldn't ask questions but the most important thing is to have the mindset that prayer is a communication between you and your father so when you come to god come to god without understanding that okay i've come to god and i will get answers it's not a it's not a one-man show it's not just you doing the talking and there's just one big guy up there that is not responding no right so this mindset will help us to move on to you know the next um, point which is always believe that you can get what you ask for. Scriptures say that if you believe, if you have faith, you're able to move mountains. You're able to, even if you're the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to move mountains. <laughs> Scriptures say that if you believe in your heart and you do not doubt, okay, you will have what you say. That's what scripture says. It says that ask and it shall be given unto you. Right? Seek and you shall find. Say so you ask, you, you receive not because you ask not. So the reason why you're not getting is because you're not asking and you're not asking in faith. It's important. Faith is the ingredient. Now, the disciples went around, you know, trying to get things, trying to heal the sick and everything, but they couldn't do it, right? And then the father of the boy, I'm paraphrasing, I think the story is in Matthew 17. The father of the boy brought, you know, the boy and said, your disciples couldn't do it. Why? Jesus healed them and said, oh, you perfect generation, all of that. But then he turned to the disciples and they told him, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we heal the sick? Why couldn't we do these things that we have seen you do? And he told them that because you lack faith, right? And then he now goes ahead to say, um, the, I bet this kind comment no, but by prayer and fasting. And a lot of people have taken that context to say, there are some kind of prayers that you need fasting for. It's not true. That particular verse, it's even believed by Bible scholars that that particular verse wasn't in the original text. Prayer and fasting will not work if there's no faith. Faith is the main ingredient. Faith is the engine room, right? So you have to believe. You have to believe that God is able to do that thing that you're asking. And not just believing that God is able to do, you must believe that God is willing to do. A lot of people come to God with things that they want but deep down in their heart they don't really think that god wants to do it so some people know that oh god is god god is omniscient omnipresent he can do whatever he can do and undo but then at a point they're like if god wills the moment you start thinking like oh if god wills then you're already limiting yourself and the devil can pounce on that so the question is, what is God's will for this matter? And it goes back to the first thing on communication. So when you communicate to the Father, you're able to hear what the Father is saying. And then you know what his will is concerning that matter. Now, the first thing to know is, to know God's will, first of all, of course, read the scripture. And I said in the previous video that, you know, you can't be going to God over, a, over something that he has already expressly stated in his word. For example, going to pray to God that, oh God, is this person the one? you are just deceiving yourself because you already know that this person is not the one because the scripture has already told you the criteria to use to choose this person so you can't be going to go and ask that is this unbeliever the one when god's scripture is clear right so 
first way to know God's will, the word. What does the word say? Is it clear? Now, there are some things that are not expressly in the word. For example, maybe you want to travel. There's no way in the word that says you can travel. You cannot travel, right? But in the place of prayer, God will give you an answer. And if he gives you that answer, usually he might not give you a word to back it up. So you might get the scripture and you see something like he that sojourns, you know, something relating to traveling. And that's the beauty of scripture. It will help you. It will give you understanding. Make it a habit of knowing the will of God for that prayer point before you even start disturbing yourself too much, right? So when you know the will of God, you know that God will. Now, for example, you're praying for healing. You don't need to know the will of God in that one. God wants to heal. It's there in scripture that God wants to heal. That's why I said knowledge of the word is important. This leads me to my third point, knowledge of the word. Pray with the word. Don't pray on scriptural prayers. Praying on scriptural prayers is a recipe for failure. It's a recipe for not getting results. Right? People say, oh, I'm not getting results. What kind of prayer did you pray? Now, you went to prayer. You went to, you went to ask God to make you, maybe, for example, pass your exams. And you say, God, I want, to, I want to pass all those useless people in my class. Can you come? I want to shame them. You are not praying right. Because even your reason for wanting to, sh for wanting to pass your exam is already faulty. Right? Yeah, in some situations, God will use your story to put your enemies to shame. But that's not your call to me. You don't worry. Just tell God what you need. Pray it in the right way. God, give me wisdom. God, give me understanding. God, I, I need retentive memory. As I write down, I seek favor. As people, as the, mark, as the examiner is marking, he marks, I have favor. I find favor in his sight. He will not mark me down unnecessarily. He will, I will just find favor. Favor. Favor surrounds me like a shield. Everywhere my script is, there will be favor. That's how to pray. You don't have to start saying, oh, all those evil examiners. God will punish them. You don't need all that. <laughs> so that's what I mean by, you know, praying the right prayer. Don't pray on scriptural prayer. The knowledge of the word will help you. The knowledge of the word is also a boost for your prayer. Right? It will help your prayer life. It will help you get results in the place of prayer. Right? My next point now will be make room for what you are seeking God to do for you. So another example with that same exam situation. You're praying that God, let me pass my exams. Right? And you're not reading. You are deceiving yourself. <laughs> you cannot... Um, be praying for something and not make room for it, right? So sometimes, that's why some people pray this prayer and say, God, prepare me for what I'm preparing for. It's so important that you are prepared because now you're saying, God, make me rich, make me rich. But if God gives you all small money now, the next thing you want to go and do is go and lavish it on your girlfriend or you want to go and to buy unnecessary things that you're not ready to buy. Some people need financial management class first before they even get wealthy because if they get wealthy, they will squander the riches. They will squander the wealth, right? So that's why many times people pray that prayer. That's a value prayer. Prepare me for what I'm preparing for. Put system in place, put structure in place. Some of you are praying that your business, you know, will scale up. You will meet the right investors and all that. But have you put structure in place? If the investor come and ask you now, where's your bank statement for this so-so-so year? Where's your financial statement for so-so-so year? You don't have, you don't have your projection. You don't have an accountant, in fact. Shameless plug. Let me plug in the accountant. Here. <laughs> but yeah, you don't have all these things in place. But you're seeking investors. You're seeking, you're saying grace will find me. It doesn't work like that. Only a few people will find Ghana must go of money. It's not going to happen all the time. Many times God is going to place men in your life to elevate you. And so that's why you must be prepared for what you are praying for. I'm not saying you should be totally prepared. But I mean, put in... You know, for example, maybe you want a car now. You can just, you know, say, okay, I want to learn how to drive. I want to get a driver's license. You know, just put in some things in place for what you are seeking. So this, doing this will even make you, you know, know that you have faith. You have the faith to carry what you are asking for. Now, moving forward from that, I'm going to talk about, you know, the place of, yes, I already have faith and I'm not still seeing results. I know Fadike, you're saying faith, faith, faith. And faith is the major ingredient, to be honest. But yes, let's say you have had faith, so much faith. You feel like you've had enough faith and yet you're not getting results. I'll say another thing is trust. So there's faith and there's trust. In the place of trust is choosing to wait and hope that God is able to do. Now, I'll ask you, how many people have you studied in the scripture, you know, in the place of this you're waiting? 
There are so many stories in the scripture, people that can encourage you. There's Esther, there's Hannah. Hannah's story is so powerful. When Hannah went to, you know, Hannah's been coming every shino, but she didn't get her answer. But the moment she decided, I would, I'm going to be passionate about this thing, you know, and she decided to wait on God and she started to give something. You know, she said, if you give me a son, I'll give you back right and in that process god gave her a son and she had even ex other children many other children right so with hannah's story you can draw inspiration so if you're one of those people maybe you feel like you've had enough faith and you're not getting answers i'll say go back to scripture and look for someone that you can tie your faith to that you know a story in the scripture that stands out for you that is just calling your name you know you have to have done study you have to have done exegesis on people in scripture yes there's a place of completely trusting god just say god i choose to wait on you i know that in due season god will answer you that's for sure but then you can draw strength when i say go to the scriptures and you know pick a story that stands out for you that's what i mean just so that you can draw strength you can draw inspiration you can just find hope because these stories are there for us to be able to find hope that's what scriptures tell us that you know there are examples for us so as an offshoot from that particular um, point, it's important to wait. Waiting is a key, you know, strength in this kingdom. If you're not willing to wait, you're not ready to get great results. God will test you with waiting, with patience. So you already, you know, you know there are so many people that have even seen the promise, like God has said, this will happen, but they are not getting that result. It's time to wait. It's time to wait it out. Even when you're praying for something, you're praying for a spouse, you're praying over somebody, you know, you must learn the art of waiting. I read somewhere that, you know, patience, which is the fruit of the spirit, long suffering, is not just in waiting, it's how you wait. So when you're waiting, are you going to be complaining? Are you going to be crying and telling everybody ah see hey hey or you could just choose to stay with god and say god i trust you yes everything is hard right now yes this pain is too much but i will choose to trust you that is so powerful and i feel like many believers this is where we falter me inclusive right so at a point you're like oh i can't wait i can't wait and then you'll get into the stage you're like god when will this job come? When will this marriage happen? You know, and I know it's hard, right? But just try your best to choose to wait. Now, to wrap this all up, I'll say that while you're praying also, remember to have the end point in mind. What do you want? Be clear. Okay? I think, okay, the first, the I'm going to divide this point into two. Number one, have a clear um, result that you want. I want to pass my exam. I want to have 10 A's. I want to have a 5.0. Clearly say, don't say, God, please just let me pass. Because passing, there are different kinds of passing. There's pass of 3.0, pass 4.0. If you get a 3.0, you didn't fail. Yeah, as far as, you know, the academics is concerned, you did not fail. But when you get a 5.0, you said, you know that, yes, that's flying colors, right? So you must have that, you know, clarity of results. What exactly do you want? What do you want for that thing? So this is a mistake a lot of people make. They just come and they just pray everything. They don't jump back. No. Be clear. Get a pen and paper. Write down what you want. Say it. Like, I want 5.0. I want a car. Lexus 230. Now, a lot of people, and this is something I learned from my pastor, right? If a lot of people don't like to say what they want clearly because they feel that, oh, maybe I'm asking for something too small. What if God has something big for me? And then some people think that, oh, maybe it's too big. I bet God just give me any one. So they try to just, you know, be be diplomatic with god but it doesn't work like that just say what you want and leave the rest for god that's what that's your own duty say what you want say what you want be clear be specific straight to the point you can get a pen and paper write it down so that when the testimony comes you'll be able to go back and be like yes lord yes lord thank you jesus now the second part of my point is now have the end point in mind so knowing that having that clarity of what you want have it in your mind and use it to pray now having that end point to making it okay this is where i'm going right you'll be able to make the right call you'll be able to hear clearly you know what you want Right? And of course, I've said before that what you want shouldn't be a function of what other people are doing. You shouldn't be praying that, oh, God, my mommy Bolaji has this. That's why I want this. No, that's a wrong reason to pray. 
right so i hope that these points will really really help you so if this video has really been helpful leave a comment below leave me a summary which points stood out to you the most is it the faith the clarity of um result the end point is it um communication tell me exactly what you learned from this video in the comment section don't be shy comment below i also be in the comment section replying your messages thank you so much for watching i hope that you will go forth and just smash all of your prayer points i want to see you win thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next video